Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Dr. Tapati's presentation. Myself, Dr. Tapati Bhanjadev. Today, topic of the presentation is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, that is ELISA. This technique is one of the important methods used in immunology and other scientific fields. In this method, enzyme plays an important role. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss about four important techniques of ELISA namely direct ELISA, indirect ELISA, uh, sandwich ELISA and competitive ELISA techniques. Kindly stay with me till the end of this video. I must try to explain this topic as simple as possible. Let's start the discussion on the topic ELISA techniques. In my last video already I have mentioned that ELISA is a highly specific and sensitive analytical method that combines the specificity of immunology and the efficient catalytic binding of enzymes organically. It was first described by Eva Ingwald and Peter Parman in 1971. Similar to other types of immunoassays, this method also relies on antibodies to detect a target antigen using highly specific antigen-antibody interactions. It uses the catalytic properties of enzymes to detect and quantify, to detect as well as uh, to quantify immunologic reactions. The most commonly used enzyme labels are glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, alkaline phosphatase, beta-galactosidase, and hot cellulose peroxidase. Various detection systems have been used for enzyme labels, including colorimetric acids, fluorogenic acids, and more sensitive, that is, chemiluminescent acids. As compared to other enzyme immunoassay like immunofluorescence or radioimmunoassay, ELISA techniques uh, show several advantages like no need of special and complicated equipment and instruments, high sensitivity, good reproducibility and harmless to health. This method is commonly used to determine the presence and the concentration of a particular antibodies or antigens in a biological sample. That means it can be run for the qualitative and quantitative measurements. In case of qualitative ELISA, uh, it provides a positive or negative result for a sample. That means we can detect presence or absence of any component uh, in a particular sample. Whereas in case of quantitative ELISA, the optical density or fluorescent units of a sample is interpolated in a standard curve. And from the standard curve, we can measure the concentration of the concentration of a particular antibodies or antigen uh, in a biological sample. Let's quickly know about antigen, antibody, and then immunoassay. An antigen is any substance that triggers an immune response that produces antibodies against it. It may be a substance from the environment like chemicals, bacteria, virus, or pollen. Antigen antibody complex is actually known as immunocomplex. Antibody is a large Y shaped glycoprotein which is produced by the immune system to identify and neutralize the antigen. So in this case, this is the antigen and this is green color, uh, Y-shaped glycoprotein is the antibody. Now what is primary antibody and what is secondary antibody? Primary antibody means this is the antibody specified to specific antigen, whereas secondary antibody means it is the antibody specified to primary antibody. So in this case, um, primary antibody is actually acting as the antigen for secondary antibody. Immunoassays are a class of analytical techniques wherein the reaction between an antigen and its antibody is utilized for the detection and quantification of antigen or antibody in an unknown sample. There are mainly five types of immunoassays, enzyme immunoassay, radioimmunoassay, fluoroimmunoassay, chemiluminescent immunoassay and counting immunoassay. 
In this video, we are talking about the enzyme immunoassay or uh, enzyme linked immunoassay that is ELISA. ELISA can be used in various fields like in medical, food industry, and in toxicology labs to detect and quantify a specific antigen and antibody in a sample. It can be used for the diagnosis of various diseases. It is also used for the screening of donated blood in order to check the viral contamination. It is used to measure uh, the amount of various other proteins in the blood serum, including hormones, toxins, and allergens. It can also be used to measure autoantibody in autoimmune disease. Let's see a few names of the diseases that can be diagnosed using ELISA techniques. Ebola virus disease, pernicious anemia, AIDS, rotavirus, Lyme disease, syphilis, toxoplasmosis, Zika virus, carcinoma of the epithelial cells, etc. The basic principle of ELISA is to detect a specific antigen antibody reaction by using an enzyme which can convert a colorless substrate to a colored product indicating the presence of the antigen antibody binding. For this purpose, generally multi-well polystyrene microtiter plate is used uh, that is also known as ELISA plate. Well of, uh, well of the microtiter plate provides the solid support used to immobilize antigen or antibody of interest. Already I have mentioned that there are mainly four types of ELISA techniques, direct ELISA, indirect ELISA, sandwich ELISA and competitive ELISA. Let's discuss about uh, all the four types of ELISA techniques one by one. First of all, direct ELISA technique. This technique is considered to be the simplest type of ELISA technique. It is used for the qualitative and quantitative measurement of specific antigen present in the sample. Now, if you consider uh, a direct ELISA technique, in that case, the antigen of interest is absorbed or fixed to a well or microtiter plate. So, in this case, this is the this is a well or microtiter plate. Then, an enzyme linked to an antibody applied to the antigen. The enzyme antibody complex will bound to antigen of interest. interest. So in this case, you can consider enzyme is actually linked with the primary antibody and primary antibody is binding with the antigen of interest. Now, when substrate is added, the enzyme will convert colorless substrate to colored product. The color produced is proportional to the amount of the antigen of interest. So you can get this type of exponential graph if you plot concentration of analyte versus optical density or signal strength graph. Indirect ELISA technique is used to detect the presence and the concentration of specific antibody. In this process, the antigen is absorbed or fixed to a wheel of microtiter plate. Then the primary antibody is added to the fixed antigen. After that, labeled secondary antibody is added that recognizes the primary antibody. This method uh, differs than direct ELISA in that one more labeled secondary antibody is added in the reaction. So in this case, uh, enzyme is actually linked with the secondary antibody, not with the primary antibody. So another antibody is present as compared to direct method. In direct method, only primary antibody was there, but in indirect method, secondary antibody is involved. Now substrate is added which is converted to colored product and the color or signal produced as a result of addition of substrate is proportional to the antibodies in the sample. Now the name indirect ELISA is due to the fact that secondary antibody binds indirectly to the antigen. Primary antibody is not linked to an enzyme and it is the antibody of interest in this case. It is specific to the antigen. Secondary antibody is conjugated with an enzyme and is specific to primary antibody. So in this case, 
if AB region of secondary antibody is attached with the FC region of primary antibody. The sandwich analyzer technique is used for the qualitative and quantitative measurement of specific antigen present in a sample. The sandwich analyzer quantifies antigens between two layers of the antibodies. One is capture antibody and another one is primary antibody, just like a sandwich. Now, an enzyme-linked secondary antibody is added. When substrate is added to the mixture, the enzyme will convert colorless substrate to colored product. The color produced is proportional to the amount of the antigen of interest. Then you will get this type of graph if you plot uh, if you plot the concentration of antigen versus optical density or signal strength. You have to remember in this case that the antigen to be measured must contain at least two antigenic epitope because um, at least two antibodies bind to this antigen. In this figure, you can see this is the one part of the antigen, uh, antigen that is one epitope which is attached with the capture antibody and another part, uh, another epitope is actually attached with the primary antibody. So, in this process, you can consider three types of antibodies present, capture antibody, primary antibody, secondary antibody. Capture antibody is attached to the wheel of the microtiter plate. Primary antibody is attached with the antigen and secondary antibody. And uh, finally, secondary antibody is attached with the FC region of primary antibody. Enzyme is linked with the secondary antibody, not with the primary antibody or capture antibody. Fourth technique is competitive ELISA technique. This method is used for the quantitative and qualitative measurement of specific antigen present in a sample. In this process, capture, capture antibodies are attached on the surface of uh, surface of uh, wheel of microtiter plate then unlabeled uh, antigen which is actually antigen of interest is added after that labeled antigen which is actually linked with enzyme that is added now why this process is known as the competitive ELISA because Unlabeled antigen, which is actually antigen of interest, and labeled antigen, uh, they compete for the binding to the capture antibodies. Now, in this process, the color or the signal produced as a result of addition of substrate is actually inversely proportional to antigens of interest in the sample. So, in this case, you will get this type of graph where you can observe that with the increase in concentration of the antigen optical density is actually decreased optical density or signal strength is decreased so inversely proportional in absence of antigen of interest in absence of antigen of interest uh, in the sample will result in a dark color why because the labeled antigens concentration is high and they are actually binding with the capture antibody and giving the color. Whereas in presence of antigen of interest that means in presence of undeveloped antigen will result in a light color or no color because the concentration of the antigen of interest is actually increasing. Therefore, they are binding with the capture antibody more as compared to the Label antigen, so there will be uh, less action of the enzyme on substrate, and you will get less color with increasing antigen of interest with increasing the concentration of unlabeled antigen or antigen of interest. So we have observed that among these four types of ELISA techniques, uh, mainly um, indirect ELISA technique is used in order to estimate the concentration of primary antibody present in our sample. Whereas if you consider about direct ELISA, 
sandwich ELISA and competitive ELISA, those are actually used in order to detect or in order to quantify the concentration of antigen, not the antibody. Another thing is that secondary antibodies are utilized in case of indirect ELISA technique and in case of sandwich ELISA technique. Those are not used in direct ELISA and competitive ELISA technique. And finally, uh, in case of direct ELISA technique, enzyme is actually linked with primary antibody. In case of indirect ELISA technique and in case of uh, sandwich ELISA technique, enzyme is attached with secondary antibody. Whereas in case of competitive ELISA technique, uh, enzyme is linked with the antigen, although that antigen is not our uh, interest that means uh, we generally in case of competitive ELISA we generally uh, focus on the or we generally measure the concentration of unlabeled antigen and uh, the indirect and the sandwich ELISA methods are the two most common types used in different analytical methods among these four types of ELISA techniques. Thank you very much for watching this video. Kindly share and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.